Okay, welcome back to Redneck Rantings. It is Wednesday, May the 1st, 2019. We got us a brand new rant. I was going to uh, do a piece on the interference of Twitter in the uh, European Union parliamentary elections, and I still intend to do one uh, because they are up to some snarky bullshit that I do not approve of. But instead, I want to talk about what cracked off on Twitter. I mean, not on Twitter in Venezuela over the last 24 hours. For those of you who don't know, uh, the opposition leader, uh, Juan Guaido, in Venezuela has been staging an uprising. Essentially what has happened is that elements, uh, is, that about, uh, is that about 24 hours ago, elements of the Venezuelan armed forces loyal to Guaido rose up and put on blue armbands and blue face masks and began engaging in combat operations against military elements loyal to Maduro, who is the current leader of Venezuela. Now, since that has happened, there's been a few, there's been a few developments. We have had things like the people coming out in force against, and I, when I say the people, I mean regular ordinary Venezuelan working class, working individuals, civilians on the street coming out and protesting against the government for the government forces and, and in some cases engaging them to the limits, to the limited capacity that they, that they have. Uh, there have been reports that, uh, elements loyal to the opposition, that is, ones looking to bring down the Maduro regime, at one point had captured a major air base in the city of Caracas, which, my understanding, is uh, the largest city in Venezuela. So that was a major, major uh, coup. That was a major, major feather in their cap. There has been video footage of what the what the mainstream media is calling tanks, they're not tanks. They're armored personnel carriers, which is a significant difference because an armored because a tank is actually like it's got a turret with a big fucking cannon on it, and it's got treads. An armored personnel carrier is basically an armored car that can stop really heavy bullets, and typically has a couple of relatively smaller guns, like machine guns, mounted on it. But it's not a tank. And there's been video footage of armored personnel carriers under the control of Maduro loyalists ramming into crowds of Venezuelan civilian protesters and just running them down. The government back the, the government radio station has ceased operations which is never a good sign because, well, when that happens, basically they're trying to control the flow of information, which means that the only story they want to get out is theirs. Uh, apparently, and I just did a little bit of research before starting this video, apparently Maduro is going around the media claiming victory, claiming he's put the, he's putting, he's put the, uh, the coup down, the uprising down, and that he has stepped on it. However, I'm really not in the habit of believing socialist dictators when they declare victory in an uprising. I will believe that he has won when I see confirmed reports that Juan Guaido has been publicly executed. Because as long as the, op as long as the opposition leader is, is on the board, it's, any it's honestly anybody's game. Okay, This is what socialist dictators do when people eventually get sick of their bullshit is as soon as they have the ability to, they immediately start declaring victory because the whole idea is, is that you want to get the people, uh, you want to get the people backing you and you want to get the undecided elements backing you. And in situations like that, the undecided elements typically tend to go whoever appears to be winning. And obviously who, whoever controls the flow of information has the greatest advantage in that respect. Now, Personally, I hope that the Maduro regime goes down in flames. Oh, and there's also been uh, been some talk 
of uh, outside intervention. Apparently, there's been reports um, that, commu that, 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 that foreign elements from foreign communist governments have been involving themselves in this conflict on behalf of Maduro. President Trump is talking about involving the U.S. in it personally. I hope that he does so because I firmly believe that the United States has an absolute sovereign duty to step in and back anti-socialist, anti-dictatorial elements in these situations. All right? So if President Trump does that, it's going to be one more reason for me to vote for him. Maybe it'll be one more reason that you think he's a scumbag. The other part of this that I want to discuss is twofold. There's two things that I want to get into. First off, this turn of events should come as, an ab as a surprise to literally nobody who has ever read a single fucking history book. This is what happens every single time you get a socialist government. All these people who are talking about what a great idea socialism is, this is socialism, and it's happened again and again and again and again and again. Um, what you get is you get a socialist government takes over. They typically take over from a government that had a lot of money, and they spend that money giving people free stuff. And they get more money by taking money from, you know, from the so-called rich. And then when they run out of money to take from other people, the economy invariably starts to collapse. There starts being little to no goods in the stores, little to no food. People start getting hungry. People start getting, people start getting very justifiably upset because a parent with a hungry child really only has one driving motivation. Get food in the belly of that kid so they stop crying about how hungry they are. At that point, you start getting the government cracking down on civil rights. You get them doing whatever they can to control the flow of information. They typically start taking the guns away from people. And at some point, people get enough of not having enough. They get tired of not having enough to eat, not having enough of the basic necessities, not having enough or indeed any of the little luxuries that they used to enjoy in life, okay? And sooner or later, they get sick and tired of it, and they rise up. And when that happens, one of two things goes down. Either the socialist regime loses, in which case the people take back their country and they may or may not replace it with something better. Maybe it's a democracy. Maybe it's, you know, just a right-wing fascist version of the same crap that they had before. But version one is the socialists get ousted. Version two is the socialists win, and they double down on the despotism. And they wind up taking more rights away from people and they wind up making public examples of anybody that they consider to have been a leader of the uprising. And they do that through things like work camps and purges and public executions and just generally great big examples of y'all think you had it bad before, look what you've got now because you got out of line. If you think that it was bad before, remember, we can and will make it worse if you don't mind your place. And so much for the glorious worker's paradise where everybody's equal. No. Like Mr. Orwell said, all animals are equal, some are more equal than others. Welcome to socialism, welcome to communism. The last point I want to make is this is precisely the kind of thing that the Second Amendment is intended to prevent. Excuse me. And yes, I know that I talk a lot about guns. Well, you know what? I happen to be a big believer in guns. And this is one of the reasons why. Because if the Venezuelan people, the common man and woman on the street, had guns, they would not be as easily oppressed. It is a hell of a lot harder to put your foot 
on the back of somebody's neck when they can reach up and put a bullet into your kneecap. Okay? And I know I've said words to that effect before, but it is true. This is what happens every time any dictator, and I mean right wing or left wing, gets into power. But it's particularly pervasive among socialist and communist dictatorships. First, they get power. Then they take the guns. Then they take away as many rights as they feel is necessary to put their plan in place and to basically brick themselves in because you cannot fight back against a tyrant who has APCs and machine guns and crew-served weapons when all you've got is rocks and Molotov cocktails, okay? You can't put up an effective defense against that, and so basically you're really just kind of stuck being a slave. So this is why it is very, very important not to allow ourselves to be disarmed. This is exactly what the Founding Fathers were talking about when they drafted the Second Amendment. They understand that a tyrant's job is made significantly easier when the people that they are looking to tyrannize cannot fight back effectively. And people in Venezuela have said the same thing. We should never have allowed the government to take away our guns because once they did, that's when things really got bad because that's when we couldn't fight back. I guarantee you, if the ordinary people on the street in Venezuela had guns right now, Maduro would not be in a place to claim victory because you would have armed civilians working in concert with the anti-Maduro forces and the loyalist forces would be hopelessly outmatched simply by sheer weight of numbers because the civilians would be able to lay down fire and let the gov and let the the guys with the military training and the really nice toys get in there and hit them even harder all right so in summation there's an uprising going on in Venezuela the dictator there is claiming victory not going to believe it for right now and this is text book history 101 what happens every time 100% of the time you get socialism you get a dictatorial system that does not respect the rights of the individual that does not provide for their basic needs their basic well-beings their basic well-being sooner or later people get pissed off they get tired of being hungry and not having the things that they need they rise up and in order to prevent them from rising up before it gets to that point, the government invariably takes away the guns. So remember, never allow the government to take away your liberty. Never allow the government to take away your guns. And not necessarily in that order. Because if you let them take away your guns, you're three quarters of the way to letting them take away your liberty. That's all for right now. Have a great night. Uh, if I learn anything else, I may post an update. Like, share, subscribe. Comment below. Have a great night. Talk to you later. Bye.